It's thanks to him that we are here today. He wasn't just an outstanding musician, but he was also an entrepreneur with a vision towards making classical music available and accessible to everyone. I think, I think he'd be very proud of the BBC's commitment to broadening the reach of the proms and creating an even more inclusive landscape for the future. Let's have three cheers for Sir Henry Wood and progress. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Well done, well done. Eight weeks of proms concerts, not only here in the Royal Albert Hall, but across all four nations of the UK. In Aberystwyth, I practiced that all day. <laughs> and I'm going to say it again, Aberystwyth. <laughs> Gateshead, Dewsbury. Oh, Londonderry. Perth. Truro yeah. and Great Yarmouth. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know the routine. Okay, I got it now. With music from Bach to Bruckner, Fado to Gershwin, Ligeti to Northern Soul, Stravinsky, okay, there we got it. Stravinsky to Judith Weir, okay. An incredible and strange variety, yes. Indeed, 84 proms with the finest soloists, choirs, orchestras, ensembles, conductors, composers, and arrangers. Yay! <laughs> the proms is truly the ultimate showcase for great artistry and superb audiences. Please join me, let's give a big round of applause to all the many artists who have appeared in the 2023 season. And special thanks to our artists this evening, our soloist, Lisa Davidson and Sheikh and the one and only Sheku Connie Mason. Our composers, Laura Karpman, Roxana Panufnik, and James B. Wilson. The BBC Singers. BBC Symphony Orchestra. And once again, let's pay tribute to the promenaders. Yay! These, these wonderfully robust folk who buy the standing tickets and stand the whole time, that's amazing, and who have, my feet are killing me, I don't know about you, and who have continued their tradition of collecting donations from proms audiences for musical charities. This year, listen to this, they have raised an amazing 
85,000 pounds. Bravo! So tonight marks the 10th anniversary of the day I became the first woman to conduct the last night of the prom. And apparently, it's worthy of inclusion in the Guinness Book of World Records. I am not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. They have called. And, uh, you know, silly as that is, it, it reminds me of how much work remains to build a more equitable world for the next generations. The classical music world has made strides toward a more inclusive experience, and I want to give a big shout out to my wonderful colleague, Dalia Stasevska, who conducted the opening night, the first night of the proms. I'm really, I'm really heartened by, and, and inspired by the increasing numbers of incredibly gifted women that I see, whether applying to the conducting fellowship I founded in 2002, or on podiums across the world. That said, we can't ignore the fact that we live in a world where in some places, women are denied an education and denied basic human rights. The most the most recent UN report puts gender, gender parity, I don't want to be a downer now, people, gender parity at a staggering 134 years away. So, instead of being depressed, now is the moment to link arms, stand strong together, remain vigilant for equality, art, diversity, representation, and above all, what music brings us, joy. Let's do it. Thank you. Next year, the BBC proms start here on Friday, if you're marking your calendar. I know you are, all you people right here. The 19th of July. But for now, let's celebrate the last night of the proms. Please join us in singing along.
take a cup of kindness yet for old Lang Syne. That pian to friendship and looking back on the very best of times brings to a close this summer's prom season. Before it, we heard Benjamin Britten's arrangement of the national anthem for the first time at the last night of the prom, sung in honour of King Charles III. The BBC Singers and BBC Symphony Chorus and BBC Symphony Orchestra, conducted by Marin Alsop, who is such a perfect last night of the proms conductor, because she really does have a great sense of humour. She told me yesterday she positively embraces the wacky. Well, you really need to do that around here. Our soloists, the soprano Lisa Davidson and cellist Sheku Pane Mason. There is always a sense of saying farewell at the end of the last night of the proms. The promers wishing each other well, telling each other they'll be back here in ten months' time. And for two players in the BBC Symphony Orchestra this evening, it's farewell to long-standing friends. Daniel Mayer, who's been a second violinist in the orchestra with 37 years' service and viola player Audrey Henning, who's given 31 years service. That's amazing, isn't it? 70 years between them of dedicated service to the BBC Symphony Orchestra. Farewell, Daniel Mayer and Audrey Henning. Farewell and all the best for the future. Incredible service. Quick shout-out to Grayson Perry and his wife, Philippa, fanning themselves frantically here. Don't forget, you can hear proms from this season for a further 30 days after tonight. There is so much to enjoy. Do take a trip to BBC Sounds to explore the riches. For my money, this has been one of the best seasons ever. We'd like to thank all the technical producers who put in huge hours to ensure that we can bring you here on Radio 3 every prom live. Our thanks to Marvin Ware, John Wilson, Drew Leckie, Matilda Macari and Rob Winter, our technical team this evening, and producer David Pack. Emma Bloxham is editor of Proms BBC Radio 3. David Pickard is the director of the BBC Proms. We'll be back here, as was said by Marin, on Friday, July the 19th, for the first night of the 2024 season. It's in Georgia and Mai's diary already. That'll be the 130th Proms season. For now, though, for the last time this year, on behalf of Georgia Man and myself, Petra Trelawney, let me say good night from the Royal Albert Hall. And back to John Shea at Broadcasting House.